Et voilà ça. Ayun, oh, nakaganon. There's no audio. Ayun. Yeah, yeah. Ayan, ayan. Yeah, tama. O, ayun. Hindi, hindi tayo may problema. Sa kanilang na ito. Yeah, hindi tayo floor. I can hear you. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there's no sound. Hello? Uh, hello po. Uh, coordinating na po kami sa uh, staff po natin sa hotel po para sa audio. Tunnel. We're slowly opening up our economy while our government accelerates its vaccination drive. We are pleasantly surprised with the better than expected performance of our GDP in the third quarter with a growth of 7.1%. Allowing our countrymen flexibility to mobilize does not mean that the COVID-19 pandemic is coming to an end. We must not let our guard down. 
we must strictly follow minimum health protocols and get ourselves and our fellow countrymen vaccinated. We owe it to our country. Last month, we had our annual general membership meeting where the members elected a new set of the board of directors. Recently, our 2022 board elected Mr. Michael Arcatomi Mike Guzwarin as the 2022 president of our organization. <laughs> who will lead us in the election year and the post-pandemic world. Congrats, Mike. I strongly urge everybody to support Mike and the 2022 board with the same zeal as you have been supporting me and my administration. Today is another milestone for Phoenix as we announce and award the most coveted Orlina Trophy there, to the 15th ING Phoenix CFO, CFO of the Year. The award is the highest honor being given to a chief financial so finance officer in the country. Some call it as the Oscars for our CFOs. Later, we will publicly announce this year's awardee who embodies the qualities of a game-changing CFO. My congratulations to you and your team. This gathering is also extra special, having no less than Mr. Manny Pangilinan, one of the most respected business luminaries, not only in the country, but in the region, as our keynote speaker, who will be properly introduced later on. I thank the CFO of the Year Award Committee and its search and selections panel and champions led by Jet, Chairman Jet Pampolina, <laughs> Vice Chair Renan Piemonte, <laughs> and Liaison Director Flor Tariela for, ab for ably and successfully conducting this year's search. My special thanks goes to the Board of Judges for choosing the best candidate among the nominees who all embody the finance profession's high standards of professionalism and integrity. Also, the search would not have been possible without the endearing support from ING Bank. Thank you, our friends from ING. For 15 years of partnership, and we at Phoenix look forward to more years of fruitful collaboration. As is customary with our monthly meetings, may I now report what we did since the last October general membership meeting. On advocacy, as you all know, your organization Phoenix continues to be at the forefront of national business and economic issues. Through the Phoenix Week Committee, led by co-chairs Albert Gamboa and Brian Edang, and Liaison Director and now President-elect Mike Gorin, we are holding a series of forums featuring our presidential and vice presidential candidates. The forum focuses on the economic platforms of the candidates. This is part and parcel of our voter education program. Hopefully, it will enable our voters to choose intelligently our next president and vice president who will lead the country into the new normal. The questions from the public are being vetted by the National Affairs Committee core group, led by no less than former Governor Sai Tetanko, Vice Chair Risa Mantarin, and Romy Bernardo. We hope to receive confirmation from the other candidates for the coming weeks. I thank the Federation of Filipino Ch Chinese Chambers of Commerce and Industry, the Manila Times, One News PH, and Signal TV for partnering with us in this project. On another front for the past month, 
Phoenix has issued or co-signed six public statements, all dealing with the economy, including with the, with the COVID pandemic, which are now being flashed on the screen. Following our webinar on the creative industry last October 19, Phoenix has co-signed a joint letter is spearheaded by the Ancada Philippines to DTI Secretary Ramon Lopez, urging him to endorse the certification as urgent for immediate enactment of the Philippine Creative Industries and Development Act, a much-awaited law that will spur the growth of a sector already contributing over 7% over of the GDP in our country. Yesterday, your organization, to, together with water.org and other partners, sign a memorandum of understanding to collaborate in the promotion and advocacy for access to safe water and sanitation services through financing and exchange of information relevant to the program. We in Phoenix believe that access to safe water and sanitation will accelerate the financial inclusion, especially of the less, less fortunate members of society. On past events, as, has, as earlier been announced in the, um, through, through our um, uh, social media, our committee conducted seven webinars and online socials and meetings since our last general membership meeting. Thank you to the Arts Committee, led by Chair Lia San Juan and Legion Director Domingo, to the Membership Committee, led by Chair Caloy Cervantes and Legion Director Tiffy Sulueta, with Life Subcommittee Chair, Past President Archie Bartolome and Fellowship Subcommittee Chair, Chair Jen Yap, to the Women in Finance Committee, led by Chair Terry Magleo and Legion Director Tiffy Sulueta, and to the Financial Inclusion Committee, led by Chair Gay Santos, Vice Chair Joey, uh, Joey Campos, and Legion Director Ian Guevara, for putting in place those webinars and online activities for the membership and our guests. Our future projects are also ongoing. We still have a lineup of seven projects for the year. Please make time to attend them as there are valuable takeaways for your businesses and especially at, especially at this crucial time. We will give you the details of the announcement uh, in due time. As you know, we conducted our annual Phoenix conference. I'm extremely proud of our recently conference held last October 4 to 8. Despite the pandemic, we had a record high of 46 speakers, panelists, and moderators from three continents, Asia, Europe, and North America, and a record sponsorship of over 5 million pesos. There were 10 different sessions spread throughout the five days with the themes, with themes on each day. The topics provided our participants with most relevant information as we traverse this pandemic moving towards the new normal. The week-long conference culminated in an exclusive Phoenix member-only virtual party filled with entertainment, games, and raffle prizes. A very fitting way for our members to unwind and relax after a week of thought-provoking sessions and insightful perspectives from our speakers and panelists. I am very pleased to report to the membership that we have received highly positive comments and commendations from the attendees on both the content of the sessions and caliber of our speakers and moderators. My congratulations and profound thanks to our Phoenix Week Committee, led by co-chairs Albert Gamboa, I think Albert is here, and Brian Edlang and Legislation Director Mike Gorin. On membership, for the first time, we will have a new roster of membership called the Associate Members. We did this to beef up our membership 
and as part of our succession planning. During our last meeting, your board has approved the acceptance and retention guidelines for this new category of members. The guidelines will be given to you soon. And I hope each and every member of this organization will take this opportunity to recruit for, for more members for Phoenix. As a special thank you to those who have paid their annual dues and who remain with us, we will be also giving one each one of you a commemorative plate, art plate featuring artworks of our national artist, Fernando Amorsolo. This could not have been possible without the approval of the uh, um, uh, Amorsolo Fund Art Foundation. Uh, we are also providing, aside from the free art piece, we are also producing three more other designs, which you can buy for 3,500 pesos each, or a bundle of three, three designs for 10,000 pesos. You won't regret purchasing them. Please reserve quickly because there are a lot of car orders coming in. On sponsorship, at this point, I would like to reiterate our sincerest gratitude to the following year-long year sponsors that have supported Phoenix throughout the year. As partner, the Union Bank of the Philippines, First Philippine Holdings Corporation and LT Group as platinum partners, platinum sponsors, Ayala Land as diamond sponsor, Converts ICT Solutions Inc., Divina Law, Filipina Shell Petroleum Corporation, SGB and Company, United Auctioneers as gold sponsors, Bank of the Philippine Islands, Video Unibank Inc., Sirtec Holdings Corporation, and Mega World as patron sponsors, and of course, our knowledge partner, KPMG, RG Manabad and Company, for producing the first ever annual CEO of CFO survey. I hope that this project will be continued by succeeding administrations. In closing, we will continue to update you on our upcoming programs, particularly on the developments for significant trust for the year. And we fervently hope for your continuing support. Thank you. Mabuhay ang Phoenix. Mabuhay tayong lahat. Thank you, Attorney Francis. To formally launch the 2021 Phoenix Directory, may I call on the Chairman of the Media Affairs Committee, Ms. Wilma Miranda. President Francis Lim, Phoenix officers, members, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm happy to announce that today we are launching the 2021 Members Directory. If you prefer a hard copy, please have it pick up at our Phoenix office. Please email your request so that we can send to you a hard copy. And of course, please don't forget to send an authorization letter to your representative. The digital copy will also be made available upon your request. But of course, this is all, always be available too in the future in our website. And don't forget that this directory is exclusive, exclusively for Phoenix members only and the advertisers. So please don't share it with anybody who is not authorized to receive the copy. And at this point, I would like to take this opportunity very quickly to thank our advertisers who had been supportive of our directory for the past year. Namely, Finma Corporation, Siemens Philippines, ZMG Ward Howell, Villarus, Villarus and Company, CPAs, Royal Asia Appraisal Corporation, and Inventor Miranda and Associates, CPAs. And I would like to thank also our directory subcommittee chair, Ms. Blanca Mercado and our ever supportive license director, Larry Concepcion. Of course, I would not 
miss thanking our secretariat headed by our executive director, Mike Vinluan, with his able assistants, Lynn, Lynn Vizcaya and Chona Gurhel. So enjoy our directory. And I would like to thank the, this opportunity from the CFO of the committee for giving us a chance to launch the directory today. Good afternoon once again, and may now uh, uh, call back our MC for this day for the rest of the proceedings of this program. Mr. Mike Toledo. Thank you, Ms. Wilma. At this point, may I call on the Chairman of the Membership Committee to introduce the new members for induction, Mr. Caloy Cervantes. Thank you. Good afternoon. We will now induct the following new members. I shall call on the name. I'll state the company position and the company and the sponsors from Phoenix. First is Marifel Dalafu. Chief Finance Officer of Rappler Inc. Sponsor Attorney Francis Lim. Second is Mr. Ramon Diaz, Group Chief Finance Officer of Megawide Construction Corporation, sponsored by Jess de la Cruz. The third is Anthony Everlyn Lee, partner of Acra Law, sponsored by Attorney Francis Lim. Fourth is Nancy M. Rivera. Chief Financial Officer of Isla Petroleum Corporation, sponsored by Ray Abilo. Fifth is Aproniano Ambi Sabio III, Group Finance Head of DES Financing Corporation, sponsored by Carlo Lazatin. And finally, the sixth is Feline Ginger Tanchi, Vice President for Corporate Services, Thermal Luzon Inc., sponsored by Ray Abilo. May I request all mem members, please, to open your camera and to add solemnity to the occasion. May I call on our president, Francisco Ed Lim, for their oath of membership. Thank you. Uh, may I request Ms. Debbie Dan to come over, please? And um, can uh, the new members raise their right hand, please? I. I. State your name. Aproniano Sabi the third. Ramon Diaz. Having been accepted as a member of the Financial Ex Executive Institute of the Philippines. Having been accepted been as a member of the Financial Executive Financial Institute of the Philippines. The Philippines. Do hereby solemnly swear. Do hereby, do hereby, hereby solemnly, solemnly, solemnly swear. Solemnly swear that, that I will faithfully discharge to the best of my ability. That I will faithfully discharge to the best of my ability. My duties and responsibilities in the pursuit of its goals and objectives. By duties and responsibilities in the pursuit of the objectives. That I will protect and uphold its constitution and bylaws. That I will protect and uphold its constitution and bylaws. That I will abide by its code of ethics. That I will abide by its code of ethics. That I will observe the highest professional, moral, and ethical standards. That I will observe the highest professional, moral, and ethical standards. And that I voluntarily impose this obligation upon myself. And that I voluntarily impose this obligation upon myself. That I voluntarily without mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without mental reservation or purpose of evasion. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you and welcome to Phoenix. Welcome to Phoenix and congratulations. Congratulations to the new Phoenix members. This ends the first part of the program.
Please join me in honoring the first ING Phoenix CFO of the Year. Our ING Phoenix CFO of the Year. Our CFO of the Year awardee. Our CFO of the Year. And now, the ING Phoenix CFO of the Year is... For more than a decade now, Global Financial Institution ING and the Financial Executives Institute of the Philippines, or Phoenix, the umbrella organization of more than 800 finance and business professionals, have been shining the spotlight on the Philippines' best CFOs to promote good corporate governance in the country. Choosing the CFO of the year follows a set of qualitative and quantitative criteria. This set of criteria was designed by the Phoenix Foundation and the Ateneo Graduate School of Business. The criteria gives equal weight to the CFO's performance in four key roles. As steward, the CFO preserves the assets of the company by minimizing risk and getting the books right. As an operator, the CFO runs a tight finance operation that is efficient and effective. As a strategist, the CFO helps to shape overall strategy and direction in the company. As a catalyst, the CFO drives change in financial approach and mindset, so the entire organization performs better. The award's stringent and meticulous search and selection process starts with the nomination of the CFO. The search is open to a CFO from any company registered and operating in the Philippines, whether local or foreign-owned, privately held or publicly listed. The ING Phoenix CFO of the Year Award is the most prestigious and coveted recognition in the Philippines' finance profession. The CFO is recognized as the best among the best from no less than his peers and colleagues in the industry. The CFO joins the growing ranks of past awardees, some of whom have become chairman or CEOs of top organizations. The CFO gains exposure for himself, his organization, and his advocacy. The CFO is awarded a glass trophy especially designed by renowned Filipino glass sculptor, Ramon Orlina. Shining the spotlight for more than a decade now, the ING Phoenix CFO of the Year. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 15th ING Phoenix CFO of the Year Award Ceremony, live at the ballroom of the New World Hotel Makati. Let us welcome our host for today, Metro Pacific Investments Corporation's Managing Director of Government Relations and Public Affairs, Attorney Mike Toledo. Good afternoon, everyone. Maayong udto kaninyong tanan, uh, maayong hapon. So welcome to the uh, 15th ING Phoenix CFO of the Year Award, which are, we are holding in a hybrid fashion here today at the New World Hotel. Uh, today we will shine the spotlight to a game-changing CFO, who even in this time of a pandemic, was able to stand out and able to navigate uncharted territory and bring her organization to new heights. Yes, I did not commit any mistake in my pronouns. It's a her. You know, our awardee for this year is actually the third woman awardee. It is also worth noting, apparently, that for the second consecutive year, 
our awardees during the pandemic are both women or ladies. So what does that tell us? That women apparently manage well during times of crisis. And number two, I guess that wise man was right. If you want something done, give it to a woman. Oh, come on, ladies, come on. One round of applause. I just said something very nice. <laughs> and of course, um, when I was asked to host, because this is the first time I'm hosting a Phoenix event, I've been hosting the Management Association of the Philippines Management Man of the Year, of which, of course, uh, my boss MVP is an awardee, as well as Secretary Jesse Sanislao, for more than 15 or 16 years now. But this is the first for Phoenix, and I have a feeling it won't be the last because my former colleague at Acra Law, the president now of Phoenix, uh, Attorney Francis Lim, has always been a slave driver. <laughs> Believe you me. And uh, I did learn a couple of things from him, but one thing's for sure, he's worse than Ebotan in terms of uh, being a slave driver. But really, I couldn't say no for a plethora of reasons. Well, one of them is the fact that uh, the winner, the 10th winner of this award is a good friend of mine. And if correct me if I'm wrong, he was the first from the MVP group of companies to win this prestigious awards, which as they say is the Oscars for the finance community. And that's uh, Mr. Danny Yu, then CFO of Felix, my good friend Danny. It was really a great wonder, considering the challenges that the mining company faced at that time, that he became the CFO. But of course he has to because his chairman is a very demanding chairman and he has no choice but to deliver. And of course, the winner for today or the awardee today is a dear friend who will be properly introduced. Another reason why I couldn't say no. And last but definitely not the least, the mere fact that the keynote speaker is none other than my boss. So today's ceremony is still hybrid like last year. We have a very small group of people gathered here at the New World Hotel. Actually, this is the first time, I'm sure for many of you, that you're in one ballroom. Um, while the rest are in the comforts of their home um, and offices watching via Zoom, Facebook, and even YouTube. So I'm sure some of them are wearing their uh, suits, blazers, or ties, but actually they're wearing shorts or jogging pants. That's the new fashion for today. Now, all of us here at the, at the venue are fully vaccinated. We were asked to show our vaccination cards. And it's a minimum requirement by the hotel and the IATF. We also observe physical distancing, as you notice, tables are quite far apart. And we are wearing masks, except when eating, because indeed it would be very laborious if one is to eat with its mask on. Um, and as an added precaution, because Phoenix really would want to de-risk everything. All the attendees, the Phoenix staff, the technical team, and the banquet staff took rapid antigen tests, all of us here, uh, before they are allowed to enter the venue. In fact, I took mine twice, just to be sure. So, without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, at this point, I would like to call on the overall chairman of the CFO of the Year Award Committee, Deloitte Philippines Risk Advisory Partner, Mr. Jet Pampolina, to formally welcome everyone. A round of applause, please. Thank you, Mike. Um, a pleasant good afternoon to everyone. I would like to uh, welcome each and every one of you to our 15th ING Phoenix CFO of the Year Award. Similar to the 2020 CFO of the Year Award search, we all know that it would be another equally challenging year for the search as companies are still grappling with the pandemic on its second year. But we at Phoenix and in the committee also felt that it is in these critical and challenging times 
that the CFO's value and contribution to an organization will be strongly tested to navigate their companies in safe waters. Thus, in fact, worthy of being recognized and rewarded with this much coveted CFO of the Year award, with no less than their peers selecting the winner. Although we also recognize year in, year out that most, if not all, our nominees for this award are humble and hardworking CFOs that are less interested in the limelight and in joining awards, but are just preoccupied with working hard for their companies. And our awardee this afternoon is no exception. As a risk advisory partner for, from Deloitte Philippines, it was a pleasure for me to chair this year's Phoenix Committee for the second year, because we recognize that the key framework for this search, measuring the value of a company in four dimensions of being a steward, an operator, a strategist, and a catalyst, is proudly a Deloitte framework in our CFO program lab called the four phases of the CFO. Moreover, we at Deloitte are also big proponents of gender parity. And as with last year, and from the, and from the very start, has developed and identified logos, materials for the CFO search, ensuring a gender neutral feel to encourage strong nominees from both gender. And today, I'm happy and proud to note that we have again, in fact, bore fruit for the 15th CFO of the Year Award. Today as well, I would like to pay tribute and honor our very own Victor Vic de la Dinko, who has recently passed and was one of the prime movers of this search, being the founding committee chairman. Salamat Vic, and may you rest in peace. The search involved a number of Phoenix members and professionals, and at this point, I would like to thank all, all of those who comprise the CFO of the Year Award Committee, particularly the members of the search and panel subcommittee who painstakingly worked hard going through the voluminous pages of submissions with the interviews and deliberations participated ably by our vice chair, PNA Grant Thornton audit partner, Renan Piamonte. Yoli Albano, director of Allied Integrated Holdings. Lorraine Bello Sinkochan, President and CEO of Wilcon Depot. Domingo, Independent Director of Alliance Select Foods and Phoenix Director. Joey Gomez, President and CEO of RCBC Capital Corp. Attorney Yuni Perez, Managing Partner of Mata Perez, Tamayo and Francisco Law and Phoenix EVP. And Jeng Pascual, PDS Group Independent Director and former CFO Filipina Shell and also a CFO of the Year awardee. Thank you. I also would like to thank the hardworking champions. These are the Phoenix member volunteers who both advocated for the nominees and ensuring the integrity and prestige of the search, namely Joseph Albert Gamboa, CFO Asian Center for, of Legal Excellence, Attorney Nestor Tolentino, President, Best Loan Finance and Leasing Philippines. Ms. Mildred Vitancol, Board Chairperson, St. Peter Life Plan. Ms. Menchu Serenia, President of Vantage One Financing Corp. And of course, Arthur Arana, SVP and CFO, QBE Shared Services, who is this year's champion of the awardee. Welcome to the club. I also would like to thank the award auditors, those who perform the extra scrutiny of the financial statements of the companies where the CFO nominees represent, namely Saldi Aguirre, partner Isla Lipana and company PwC, and Gerald Sanchez, partner PNA Grant Thornton. And big thanks as well to our media subcommittee chair led, led by Edith Dichau, Edith, and events subcommittee chair led by Nenet Desus, all the distinguished judges, which should be properly introduced later on, the Phoenix Secretariat, our very supportive liaison Phoenix Director Flor Tariela, and of course, ING Bank, 
Managing Director Mr. Hans Seekat for supporting Phoenix in this continuing endeavor for searching the best and the brightest of our CFOs. Again, for all who have made and supported this annual search, one way or the other, thank you. And pleasant day to everyone and a big Phoenix welcome. As you can see, they're very thorough. After every speaker speaks, they put the loads of alcohol all over just to make sure that you don't get contaminated. So let's give a warm round of applause to uh, New World Hotel and for all the safety precautions that they're taking. Marami salamat. Again, thank you so much, Jet. At this point, I would like to recognize the presence of the past CFO of the Year awardees. Former Globe Telecom CFO, Mr. Delphine Gonzalez. Good to see you, Del. It's been a long time. Former Manila Water CFO, Ms. Sherisa Nuesa. Sherisa. Oh, she's there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Former SM Investments Corporation CFO, Mr. Josecio. Jollibee Foods Corporation CFO, Mr. Ismael Baisa. Former Ayalan Incorporated CFO, Mr. Jaime Ismael. SM Prime Holding CFO, Mr. Jeffrey Lim. Hi, Jeff. Last time I saw you was at Malarayat. <laughs> Our seventh awardee was uh, from GMA Network. CFO, Mr. Felipe Yalong. Our eighth awardee, former Shell Philippines Exploration CFO, Mr. Jose Jerome Pascual III. Our ninth awardee was from Manila Water, CFO, Mr. Luis Juan Oreta. And of course, our 10th awardee, none other than Mr. Danny Yu then CFO of Felix. Our 11th awardee was former Ayala Corporation CFO, Mr. Jose Chidoro Limcauco. Our 12th awardee was from San Miguel Corporation, the CFO, Mr. Ferdinand Constantino. Our 13th awardee is uh, also a good friend of mine, Ayala Land CFO, Mr. Augusto Bengzon. I don't know how he became a very good CFO considering that he's a very good golfer. Yeah. They're not mutually exclusive, <laughs> perhaps. And um, of course, the 14th and our last year's awardee from Robinson's Retail Holdings, the CFO, Ms. Mylene Kasiban. Now, as you know, ladies and gentlemen, ING Bank has been the partner of this search since 2007. And without its support, this annual search would not be possible. So the country manager of ING Philippines is currently having a good time in the United States, but he was able to send this video you know, this guy has no mean bone in his body, but he plays a mean game of tennis. So let's watch this. A pleasant day to everyone, especially to our distinguished guests, our partners at Phoenix, and to this year's outstanding CFO of the Year awardee. For the second time in the 15 year history of the ING Phoenix CFO of the Year award, we're doing the event in a hybrid manner. 
a few who are physically present at this event and the larger audience connecting virtually. Unfortunately, I did not make it back in time to be present at this venue, but I'm glad to be with you courtesy of technology. Unlike last year, when the situation was bleak, we can now say there is light at the end of this long pandemic tunnel. Last year, we honored finance leaders who had gone above and beyond their traditional role of managing their company's financial resources. We regarded them as game changers in the time of COVID-19, when everything was upended. This year, we continue to shine the spotlight on these game-changing CFPs, more especially for those leading the charge into the new normal. It's a new environment that isn't anything like the old paradigm and is still continuing. With the pandemic accelerating the trend towards <laughs> the for <laughs> CFOs have also become catalysts of digital strategies and digital stewards. And while navigating uncertainty with real-time data and digital technology at their disposal, CFOs must also strike a balance between speed, deploying funds to where they are needed or where they may earn a better return, and following protocols and internal controls for good governance. This is why we at ING value our partnership with Phoenix in mounting this annual ING Phoenix CFO of the Year Award. It is not easy to sustain an award of this kind for 15 years, especially during this pandemic and the economic crisis it has ushered. So we all deserve a collective pat on the back and congratulate ourselves for another year when we get to toast an outstanding CFO who has managed to rise above all. Congratulations and cheers to everyone. Well, thank you very much, Hans. I understand from Wing that uh, they hold meetings until two or three in the morning, New York time. So uh, Hans must be still be very much awake right now. But he should come back home, you know, too much enjoyment in New York. Anyway, thank you again to the ING Bank for uh, being at the forefront and partner of Phoenix for this prestigious recognition of our country's best CFO. Now we shall now proceed uh, to the special keynote address to be delivered by a Philippine business visionary, an icon, a well-respected leader, patron of Philippine sports, and definitely a game-changing CEO. And it is indeed my honor and privilege to introduce him. So with your indulgence, our Guest of honor and speaker graduated cum laude from the Ateneo de Manila University with a Bachelor of Arts degree in economics. He received his MBA degree in 1968 from the Wharton School of Finance and, and Commerce at the University of Pennsylvania, where he was a Proctor and Gamble Fellow. After finishing in Wharton, he worked in Manila for the Philippine Investment Management Consultants, Inc., what was called the, or called the FINMA Group, and in Hong Kong with Bancom International Limited and American Express Bank, and thereafter with First Pacific Company Limited. Mr. Pangilinan founded First Pacific in 1981 and serves as its managing director and chief executive officer. Within the First Pacific Group, he holds the positions of President Commissioner of PT Indo Food Sukes Makmur, the largest food company in Indonesia. In the Philippines, our guest of honor and speaker is the chairman of PLDT Incorporated and its wireless subsidiary Smart Communications, the leading telecoms group in the country. He also served as chairman of Manila Electric Company or Meralco. He is also chairman of Metro Pacific Investment Corporation or MPIC, Manila Water Services Corporation, MediaQuest Incorporated, TV5, Felix Mining Corporation, Felix Petroleum, Manila North Tollways Corporation, Lanco Pacific Corporation, Metro Pacific Hospital Holdings, Makati Medical Center, Cardinal Santos Medical Center, Our Lady of Lourdes Hospital, Digital Telecommunications Philippines, Digital Mobile Philippines Inc., 
PLDT Communications and Energy Ventures Incorporated. And in 2012, he was appointed as Vice Chair of Ross Holdings, which owns and operates the largest sugar milling operations in the Philippines. Now, he is currently the Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the San Beda College. In August 2016, the Samahang Basketball ng Pilipinas, or the SBP, the National Sports Association for Basketball, requested Mr. Pangilinan to be its Chairman Emeritus after serving as President since February of 2007. Effective January of 2009, MVP assumed the Chairmanship of the Amateur Boxing Association of the Philippines, a governing body of amateur boxers in the country. In October 2009, Mr. Pangilinan was appointed Chairman of the Philippine Disaster Resiliency Foundation, or the PDRF, a nonprofit foundation established to formulate and implement a reconstruction strategy to rehabilitate areas devastated by floods and other calamities. Our guest of honor and speaker is also chairman of the Philippine Business for Social Progress, or the PBSP, the largest private sector social action organization made up of the country's largest corporations. In June 2012, he was appointed co-chairman of the U.S. Philippine Business Society, a nonprofit society which seeks to broaden the relationship between the United States and the Philippines in the areas of trade, investment, education, foreign and security policies and culture. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great professional and personal pleasure to introduce to you my boss. We finally call him MVP. Let's give him a warm round of applause, please. Thank you, Mike, uh, for that uh, generous introduction. But I must say you're in good humor today, better than in most days. Where is Mike? No, thank you. Uh, good afternoon to everybody, to the SEC Commissioner, J.V. Francisco, to Phoenix President Attorney Francis Lim, to the Chairman of the Board of Justice, Judges uh, for the 15th award year, Dr. Jesse Stanislaw, Chairman of the 2021 Award Committee, Mr. Victor Pampulina. The Asian Director of the Award Committee, Ms. Flor Tariela. Of course, our RWD, uh, Annabel Chua. Colleagues in PLT Smart and Meralco. Distinguished guests, good afternoon. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of Brother Oka. I think recently installed as President of the LSSU, Brother. Congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, I haven't done any public speaking since 2019, so I'm a bit rusty. Uh, but as Mike described this event, it's a bit of a hybrid. So I know how a basketball player feels like playing in a near empty gymnasium, right? So actually, our CF, the CFOs within the group typically run to being a woman, like Annabelle here, and Betty C for Meralco, two of our major corporations, or Scottish, like Chris Young, who used to be the uh, CFO of PLDT and now the CFO of First Pacific. Because for S Scottish people, CFOs, they are, what they say, their favorite saying is, every penny is a prisoner. So I would like first to congratulate Annabelle for the distinct honor of being named 2021 CFO of the year the 15th awardee, as Mike said, and to thank Phoenix, NING, the awards committee, the board of judges for this pre prestigious recognition. Annabelle is the first PLTT CFO and the third woman to be so acknowledged. I've known Annabelle for 23 years and throughout, she has labored long and hard in the corridors and background of PLDT. We're all glad that with this award, she has emerged from the shadows to take her place in the ranks of the best Filipino CEOs. 
I've been asked today to speak about PLDT and her role as game changers. Annabelle played a key role throughout this crisis, actually. At the outset, we determined, with her advice, that it is best to turn to PLDT's innate strengths rather than stay inert or do exceptional things in panic. So we relied on our fundamentals to those principles that are proven and basic and battle tested, and to trust our people, the bedrock of our businesses. We emphasize to everyone that our tasks and goals should stay as before, not merely to survive, but to thrive in this pandemic. Not to stay in our foxholes, but to learn how to live with the virus, like returning to work as soon as practicable. Not to withdraw into our inner selves, but to look beyond ourselves into our mission to keep people connected, to keep the power on, the water flowing, our tollways operating. A fortress balance sheet to withstand a prolonged pandemic is our paramount goal. So soon after the crisis opened last year, Annabelle raised with me the matter of a new bond issue for PLDT. I was incredulous at first, given the circumstances and the fact that we had not gone to the international debt markets since 2002, a year after September 11, another memorable year. But on reflection, I concurred and encouraged her to launch as soon as we were ready. The issue turned out to be a monumental success. $11.2 billion in total demand, almost 19 times oversubscription against a final size of $600 million. Great institutional names in the subscri subscription list, the lowest coupon issued by a local corporate for the 10-year tranche, and the longest tenor of 30 years by a Philippine corporate for the second tranche. Now turning to the subject of game changers, the, the pandemic has brought tough challenges to PLDT, but has also widened the aperture of opportunities for us. Individuals, homes, and businesses pivoted to affordable digital means in order to stay resilient. The virus has made digital a necessity these days, broadband is no longer discretionary. But COVID-19 has exposed the underlying serious, serious frailties of our economy. Fortunately, these are capable of, capable of being addressed with digital solutions. So what PLDT did was to focus on changes we can make in five areas. First, supply chain disruption. We want to develop, we are in the process of developing a digital map of our nationwide supply chain from sources of raw materials, locally produced or imported for food and pharmaceuticals particularly, to their manufacturers and onto their respective markets. Correlatively, the logistical requirements of this supply chain should be part of the overall digital blueprint. Second, deficits in our health ecosystem. The digital implementation of our national ID system should help government monitor vaccination and finally start tracing, tracking of new cases. This national ID can also make distribution of Ayudas more efficient through digital wallets where funds can be disbursed directly to recipients. Third, improving health services. PLDT is working with our group hospitals with an app adopted by Metro Pacific called MWELL. This app provides consultation services remotely, propagate digital devices, transmit data to doctors, furnish diagnosis to patients, and deliver medicine to patients if needed. This is IoT at work in the health space. Fourth, digitalizing education. As distance learning emerged, our enter enterprise group is working with DepEd on automating education with a broad range of digital solutions from learning management system, systems to digital connectivities, devices and loads in the hands of 1.2 million teachers and 32 million students. Our mantra is no student, no teacher left behind. Finally, changes in our networks. Lockdowns have inflated demand for fiber to households and data services to individuals. For example, BPOs cascaded their enterprise bandwidth down 
to thousands of homes as agents started to work from home. Similarly, distance learning for millions of our students required us to accelerate expansion in scale and speed we did not anticipate. But we managed to complete our 4G wireless last year and are now seriously building our 5G infra. I believe we now have a truly nationwide broadband network to hark back to the infamous NBN. Our enterprise group made a quick pivot to new entrepreneurs bred by the pandemic. Instagram bakeries or online ukais and bookshops, whilst also building huge data centers to service hyperscalers like Amazon and Google. These hyperscalers could very well be our new BPO industry. Further, enterprise is repositioning its focus away from connectivity to digital solutions for businesses, both large and small. And finally, PayMaya also saw its number called as merchants and individuals finally realize the benefits and convenience of online payments. We're equally excited to get our digital bank going early next year, because finally, credit can reach our unbanked population, representing majority of adult Filipinos. My remarks will not be complete without referencing the imperatives of ESG nowadays, environment, social work, and governance. On two of the three points, PLDT has had a historically strong track record in governance and social engagement. As to environment, we know we need to focus on reducing our emission gas, our gas emissions to net zero by 2050. So I'd like to close by saying this crisis has been portrayed to be either a black swan, unforeseen, but with a huge blast effect, or a gray rhino highly probable, but most likely ignored, like the elephant in the room. Despite this menagerie, COVID has painfully reminded us that businesses operate in a Darwinian landscape. It will not be the biggest or smartest or most politically connected who will survive, but those who best adopt to change. To lend perspective to what this crisis is all about, I refer to a recent homily made by Father Danny Huang, former provincial of the Philippine Jesuit province and now based in Rome, which reads, and I quote Father Danny, one concept I have found helpful in naming our time is that of liminality, that strange and unsettling time and state, that space between no longer and not yet. So this best describes where we are today in transition, a passage into ambiguity and disorientation, a point in time where the doors of the past are closing behind us and we're standing at the moment at the threshold of a future that is fluid and unknown. This makes our job of telling what's ahead quite dangerous. I'm reminded of what was once said, if you want to make God laugh, just tell him your plans. I hope that years from today, when the virus is finally subdued, Annabelle and all of us at PLDT can all look back at this experience and be proud for serving as customers who rely on us for our service, for serving as shareholders by keeping the businesses operating despite the difficult environment, for serving thousands of families in and out of our companies who depend on us for their future. We regard ourselves as bearer of torches that give light to the very dark corners of our country. Finally, the abiding lesson from all this is best ex expressed by an ancient playwright who once wrote, and I quote, in our sleep, pain that cannot forget falls drop by drop upon the heart, and in our own despair comes wisdom to us by the awful grace of God. Thank you and good afternoon.
Let's give MVP another warm round of applause, please. Thank you so much, MVP, for that very insightful and inspirational message. Before we formally introduce this year's ING, Phoenix CFO of the Year, let me briefly introduce the beautiful trophy crafted by our national treasure, the Maestro of Light, as they say, Mr. Ramon Orlina, national artist, who is, according to the script, is turning 78, but he doesn't look like he's turning 78. He is quite young. And for over 50 years, he has been working on glass. For the trophy, Mr. Orlina personally described it as everlasting excellence, a truly fitting description of our 15th ING Phoenix CFO of the Year. To introduce the members of the Board of Judges, may I call on the Liaison Director of the CFO of the Year Award Committee, PNB Board Advisor, Ms. Flor Tariela. Thank you, Mike. Oh, hi, Flor. Hi. Thank you, Mike, and good afternoon. Each year, a distinguished Board of Judges is assigned the most tedious and challenging task of choosing the finest among the best of the chief finance officers in our country. The panel of judges have to go through the voluminous documents, do their own research, conduct the interviews with all the finalists, as well as completing the score sheets based on the criteria set. They meet, they deliberate, discuss passionately, sometimes even argue among themselves in the final choice for the CFO of the year. Really a daunting task for the Board of Judges. But this year, I'm happy to say the Board did two iterations, two ways of uh, finding out who is the right winner. And in both cases, both instances, the Board came up with the same winner for the game-changing CFO of the year. So let me introduce the members of this board's judges in alphabetical order. The Honorable Chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission, Attorney Emilio Aquino. We also have the President and CEO of John Clemens Consultant E, Ms. Maria Carolina Dominguez. The C CEO and Chief Behavioral Strategist of Mansmith and Fielders, Ms. Chiki Iscarial Go. Our very own Phoenix President and Senior Legal Advisor at ACRA Law, Attorney Francisco Lim. <laughs> the President of De La Salle University, Manila, Brother Bernard Oka. The Country Manager and Managing Director at ING Bank Philippines, and our sponsor for the Phoenix ING um, CFO of the Year, Mr. Hans Sikat. <laughs> and last but not least, the Chairman of the Board of Judges, Founder and Chairman Emeritus of the Institute of Corporate Directors, Dr. Jesus Jess Istanislao. May I now call on the Chairman of the Board of Judges, Dr. Jess, to officially announce this year's awardee, the game-changing CFO of the year. Dr. Jess.
as the chairman of the Board of Judges of this year's ING Phoenix CFO of the Year Award. I'm pleased to reconfirm what had already been announced by Mike Toledo and <laughs> Mr. Pangilinan. Yes. The CFO of the Year Award D, the Chief Finance Officer and the Chief Risk Management Officer of BLDT, Annabel L. Chua. I was impressed with with her intelligence and toughness and uh, resilience. The qualities uh, she had from the start and continued to this day are qualities for specific has been looking for for a uh, in a CFO. Not to mention the fact that she's female as well. No? So I think that's a plus in terms of demonstrating the kind of gender inclusivity we want to show the world from the very start. Annabel uh, is, is a very strong finance person, of course, but she's also a very critical thinker. And I think that helps me uh, in my office, in my job, and even in the Mancom, when we discuss about business matters, uh, initiatives, uh, projects, uh, products, I think she, she can challenge uh, those, those uh, very critical uh, discussions in, in where we want to bring it. She leads by example. Uh, in terms of her work ethic. She's one of the hardest workers we have here. She's just so knowledgeable about everything beyond finance. She's really made it a point to understand the rest of the business. That broader perspective that she brings really adds to her leadership and her credibility. My role as CFO and treasurer included undertaking various fundraising activities and liability management programs to ensure that the company had adequate funds to support the growth requirements of the business. At the same time, it was also part of my mandate to help ensure that we set up the underlying financial systems to support the increased operational requirements of the business. Those expansion years also saw me as CFO spearheading various M&A transactions, such as the acquisition and integration of the Digital Sun Cellular Group into PLDT Smart. Part of my role as CFO then became the ability to think ahead of the curve. Anticipating the shifts in PLDT's revenue mix from voice and SMS to data, and allocating resources accordingly. As CFO, I had to lead the company's shift in emphasis from pure revenue generation to yield optimization. She's been through us with the conversion from 1G to 2G to 3G to 4G, and now 5G, and then from, from copper to fiber, and the home broadband business, which is doing very well. And of course, the many changes uh, we've seen in the enterprise side of the business. Uh, she was instrumental in the formation of Voyager, Paymaya, and the application of Paymaya for a digital bank. Obviously, being CFO of the company is a very important position for the company, not only for the current operations, but where we want to bring it to the future. She had to get more involved in terms of how do we now operate uh, with virtual workforce. She also was um, the one who helped us transform during the time where we had to really be agile and we had to be digital. My challenge as CFO was to make sure that PLDT was able to adapt to the more stringent reporting and disclosure requirements and for PLDT to stand out among Philippine corporates given we were living up to higher governance standards even ahead of the local regulatory environment. Fast forward to the period of the pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic and the ensuing massive impact on the world have given rise to unique challenges. As CFO, I have had to ensure that the PLDT group remain financially viable 
and equipped to address the new normal. Through the pandemic, our services at PLDT and SMART proved to be essential to our customers who have had to work from home and study from home. As a company, we have had to step up our ability to serve the connectivity requirements of our customers. And that meant investing behind our network capabilities and improving our time to serve. I think a recent high point of her own career was the bond issue of PLDT last year, which was launched at the beginning of the pandemic. And it was a very successful, probably the most successful corporate bond issue in the history of this country. And uh, the 30-year terms of the bond, the 30-year tranche, was uh, groundbreaking. In fact, the terms were better than the recently issued government bond, which also had the 30-year component. And our terms were, were, were better. And I think we were more heavily subscribed than the government issue. A CFO always plays a huge role in making sure that the company is successful, making sure that the, the books are good uh, so that we can, we can continue to deliver performance, we can continue to deliver service to our customers. I guess the major challenge for Annabelle, and, and she has um, championed this, is how do you now control our costs? And I think that's a very important aspect of, uh, of the business. And in fact, we launched a cost optimization initiative uh, that is really driven by the office of the CFO mandated, of course, uh, by, by the CEO's office and making sure that we're able to bring that to the bottom line. And despite the pandemic, PLDT and SMART were able to proceed with business as usual and serve the requirements of our customers and achieve a record year in terms of financial performance. As CFO, I have been part of the outstanding team in our company that have worked hard to ensure that PLDT not only survive but thrive under these exceptional circumstances as we remain focused on the customers. I'm very happy with her and I've always felt that at some point in time in her life, she deserves to, to ascend from her current position of CFO and she should be CEO one day soon no? of one of our companies. That would be, I think, her crowning achievement if she could be CEO. Right. And that will test her true mental, I think. I want to be known for my passion and my commitment to excellence. And that as CFO, I have transformed and elevated finance into a stronger, high-value partner of the business, technology, and other support groups by providing timely and incisive insights and actively engaging with our business leaders to ensure the financial success of our undertakings. Further. I would want to have been instrumental in enhancing shareholder value and delivering strong credibility for PLDT in the financial community. Again, our congratulations to Annabelle. Another warm round of applause, please. Now, following the strict protocol on award ceremonies, I have been told that this beautiful masterpiece by uh, Orlina will not be handed over to our 15th ING Phoenix CFO of the Year. Uh, instead, but I'm sure it will be given some time, <laughs> maybe just not today. Uh, instead, maybe request our distinguished guests to please all stand on the stage so I may, may I request the following to please go on stage. The Chairman of the Board of Judges, Dr. Jesse Stanislao. Mr. Manny V. Pangilinan. Phoenix President Francis Lim. Ms. Wing Bayonetta, representing ING because Hans is still on vacation. And Commissioner Javi Paul Francisco, representing SEC Chair Aquino. Of course, Mr. Jet Pamplona, Pampolina, rather, Jet. And of course, the President of PLDT Smart, Mr. Al Panlilio.
Wow. So at this point, we would invite Dr. Jesse Stanislaw and our CFO of the Year awardee, Annabelle, to please move forward for the official handover. Let's give them a warm round of applause, please. Thank you very much. And we can we now call on Annabelle to give her response. Annabelle? Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to again introduce you your ING Phoenix CFO of the Year, none other than Annabel Chua. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Attorney Francis Lim, Phoenix President. Uh, SEC Commissioner J.D. Francisco, Dr. Jess Estanislao, Chairman of the Board of Judges for the CFO of the Year Award, Ms. Flor Tariela, Phoenix Liaison Director, Mr. Jet Pampolina, Chairman of the CFO of the Year Search Committee, my bosses, MVP, and Al, friends and colleagues. I am immensely honored and grateful to be recognized by Phoenix and ING as the 2021 Outstanding CFO of the Year. It is always satisfying for one's work to be acknowledged and validated, but it is particularly gratifying to be commended as a game-changing CFO during this time. The pandemic and its far-reaching impact altered the rules, not only the way we do business, but in the way we live. So to adapt to the new way of life, we have to become game-changers. My learning to lead during these times has been a result of many other crisis points we have weathered over the years in PLDT and SMART together with MVP and our other key business leaders. Let me just cite a few noteworthy ones. Dealing with a hostile takeover attempt, which forced us to look deep into ourselves and ask what we really wanted. It would have been easy to just despair and just give up, but we mustered the courage to face a crisis head on, examine every option, and rally the troops to effectively deal with the situation. Undertaking a liability management program in 2001 to push out our looming debt maturities at PLDT, our first step was to launch a US dollar bond. We started our deal roadshow in Singapore, flew out in the evening to Hong Kong, only to step out of the plane to the news of 9-11 happening in New York. 
Needless to say, we had to call off the whole deal, unsure of what we would do next. We took a step back and with the support of our creditors, we crafted the, our plans and issued the bond in 2002. Just goes to show that you really cannot anticipate black swan events, but you can control your reaction to them. Another one, missing certain key shifts in technology during the early days of 3G, which led to heightened competitive tensions and the loss of market leadership. The first step to addressing this was to admit and accept our oversight, then find a way to move forward. Only then did we find the boldness to invest and eventually recover lost ground. And most recent, of course, dealing with the pandemic and its life-changing effects on us all. Indeed, as noted Harvard Business School professor and author Nancy Keene said, when talking about leadership forged in crisis, and I quote, it starts with the realization of the individual that the crisis is a great classroom. This is the realization of many of us who have been through a major challenge, that there is something fertile in all this adversity, all this confusion, all this ambiguity, and at times borderline despair. In that, I can learn something important for myself of what I might be. She added, you can either rant and rave and get smaller and more angry and more brittle in the midst of all this adversity, or you can make a choice that somehow you can get stronger and more resilient and your spirit and your possibilities can get bigger. Or to paraphrase another American author, Michelle Walker, you either get trampled or you get out of the way, or you can hop on the back of the crisis and turn it into an opportunity. It is not easy being a CFO. Beyond the technical know-how, the job requires guts and brutal honesty to be the occasional bearer of bad news. And more importantly, the ability to be goal-focused and direction-focused so that the bad news is coupled with a way forward and offering credible hope. Otherwise, you could get shot. But even if you do get shot, you have to learn to put the mistakes behind you and get on with the job. Sensitive people not allowed. Now, through all the challenging ups and downs at PLDT and SMART, it has greatly helped that I was never alone. I always had great mentors and leaders who charted the course and shared the journey. First and foremost, let me pay tribute to the man without whom I truly could not become an outstanding CFO. <laughs> A man who has been my model and inspiration. I can say with pride that my long hours can never match up to his. <laughs> but even more than the example of work ethic, it has been his emphasis on passion and excellence that has driven me to become what I am today. He will accept nothing less. So MVP, thank you for your trust and confidence these 23 years. Thank you for setting the high bar for all of us to aspire to. As you always say, you never set a target unless you know we are capable of reaching it. But most of all, thank you for always giving the CFO a voice, even if at times it can be a voice of doom and gloom and a front seat at the table. Allow me also an Academy Award moment to thank all the people who made this possible, the other people. I am a good CFO only because I watch and learn from the best. Chris Young, who is now based in Hong Kong, I cannot thank you enough. I've been part of an outstanding leadership team in PLDT and SMART that has worked hard to assure that the company not only survived but thrived under these exceptional circumstances. Thank you, Alpan Lilio, our new Commander-in-Chief, for bringing in a fresh dimension to what we have built over the years. You have done a stellar job of leading us in the new normal. Other great thought leaders who have never failed to challenge me and offer great perspectives, Ray Espinosa, PLDT Director, Meralco CEO, and actually my head cheerleader for this nomination. 
Ricky Vargas, who is not here today, but he has been the champion of our transformation agenda. Gina Ordonez, another hardworking Pangilinan. <laughs> uh, Ricky and Gina are both ex-city bankers who share a common heritage with me. Debbie Tan, who orchestrated this whole effort, doing most of the work, and who refused to take no for an answer. <laughs> Yarn, many, and many others in the leadership team who not only are colleagues, but are great friends as well. To all the hardworking, relentless men and women I have in finance, who, as most know, are probably among the most overworked crew in the organization, I am grateful for the many years we have stood together. I don't have time to name everyone, but maraming salamat. <laughs> to my friends from the UP College of Business, where it all started for me, Minion, I'm grateful for her being with me today. Yeah. And last but certainly not the least, my family, Ron, Ethan, Kyra, and Kirby. Uh, they have all encouraged and supported and made many, many allowances for me through the years. It has never been in my nature to shine the spotlight on myself, but I've come to realize that by talking about my evolution and sharing the lessons I've learned, I can help others who are on a similar career path with similar aspirations. And just as MVP's legacy of passion and excellence leaves its mark on all of us at PLDP, so I hope that my story will benefit the next generation of CFOs. As CFOs, we have the platform to being a positive force in all aspects of the business, in all parts of the organization. Thank you. Once again, congratulations, Annabelle, for a well-deserved recognition. Um, and before I call on the president of Phoenix to formally close and also to uh, raise a toast to our CF of the year, just like to remind everyone that uh, we still have the ongoing uh, presidential uh, uh, forum on the economic platforms or economic programs of all the presidential candidates. We had Senator Ping Lakson as our first guests in the first forum and we are hoping that Senator Manny Pacquiao will be available this Saturday. So do watch out for further announcements on that. Uh, we are, I think, the first organization to have started this uh, debate or this discussion. So let's give the Phoenix committee in charge of this a warm round of applause, please. And now I'd like to call on the slave driver when I was in Accra Law, the president of Phoenix. He's, by the way, is a very good basketball player. Attorney Francis Lim. Uh, as we close the CFO year of the awarding ceremony, may I request everybody to stand and give a toast to our CFO of the year, 15th CFO of the year, Annabel Chua, and to our partner, ING, our board of judges, the overall awards committee, the search and selection committee, and our media partners. Cheers. 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 Thank you very much for your contribution to this very successful event. Maraming salamat. Good afternoon. Mabuhay tayong lahat.